As you know, I had to convince Merlin to do it and we had to, it had to be the right project, it had to be the right site, it had to tick all the boxes from the brief from Alton. Um, that's why it's taken so long and as you know, as with any project that any company delivers, we have budget parameters, you know the planning parameters that we work within. So with making all the pieces fit and at the right time, um, and this felt like the right, yeah. the right time. I think that it felt like the right time and I think it feels like the right location. We did look at various locations over the years, as you're fully aware, and I think this one, my view is, it is the perfect location for what we've delivered. So. Um, we've been trying for years, as you know, we looked at various different ways of putting a woody into Alton, um, and it was a case of, okay, it's actually researching a little bit Marmite, I think we just need to try it. And I think the Wicker Man we know it's not the IP, it's not based on any movie, it's an Alton own thing, but getting that right and elevating the proposition with the pre-show and the story and the immersivity is the package that's right, it's not just the fact that it's a Woody and that is what's got it through the board and to to be built. Yeah, is it also about having the right partner and the technology to deliver a Woody that could do everything we needed in the space? I think working with GCI was the right choice, I absolutely do. Um, and I think, like Brad says, it's the whole package that we had to that we had to sell, and it, and it was a sell. You know, we did have to go to the board and to to sell the the benefits of of the Woody, and and as Brad said, the research you know was was Marmot. We were wavering and this that and the other. So it was about building that whole package together. When we did. I mean, we did we did review. Others. Uh, yeah. So we started with a list. We we went and we, Bradley and I had the you know the hard task of going around and researching all the coasters. So we went over to <laughs> you know Europa. We went to see that over there. Bradley got to California as well. I didn't. I didn't find that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So so we we did sort of research. I did the full breakdown and obviously the cost analysis and this that and the other. And actually there wasn't a lot within the cost. There was nothing really. So it was a cost that drove us to GCI. Um, it was, we, we took a whole team, so we took, myself and Bradley went, the ops team went, uh, technical guys went, and we did that full analysis of how does everybody feel about the coasters, you know, what, what do we think is the best, and we went through all the sort of, you know, the materials, the maintenance, the, the experience, everything, and really it just boiled down to that sort of feeling that we thought that, you know, the GCI coaster just felt better than, you know, the other ones, so, and that's what led us to GCI. And I so think it's a lot of the research, but it just, you know. I think I know the question was about why specifically GCI, but doing that research and going around all the US parks and seeing their GCI woodies, we came to the conclusion that, like, wouldn't, why wouldn't we have a wooden coaster at Alton? It's just an obvious missing part of the portfolio, which I think gradually 
sunk into the board as well. So. So it's. <laughs> no, it's just um, obviously going to the US. They have a lot of GCI woodies yeah. to to look at. So the trip was to kind of scope out the quality of yeah. GCI woody. It's not that we weren't focusing on what's in the UK yeah. as such. Fair enough. I think with the, with the size of some of the design, you know, Alton's unique. It has a, a unique set of constraints that we have to work to. Yeah. As you as you all know, which is why, you know, our coast they go down. Yeah. We dig down in the ground because we can't go up because of the high restrictions and this, that and the other. So, you know, it was bringing GCI over and saying, this is the land, this is the constraint, what can we do in this area? And they came up with, you know, what you see out there, which I think is pretty compelling and actually fantastic in terms of the area that we've got to work with. Yeah. As always, we received a brief from Alton Towers. We knew from what we've just discussed that we wanted to put a woody in. We knew that we wanted it to be a family thrill ride. So we had those two things to consider. We then started to look at, as we always do, uh, stories and themes. So we, we always generate a whole bunch that we whittle down and we ended up with four or five. Wicker Man was one of them. There was a film IP one that was one of them, which I can't disclose, unfortunately, because we didn't end up doing it. So we don't have the rights to talk about it. Um, and a few other homegrown IPs as such. Um, one of them was just basically about what happens if wood grows a brain and starts coming alive, which felt like there was a nugget of gold in there, but when we started to round it off into a proposition that we could sell to our guests, it was like, we're talking nonsense, this is <laughs> not, what, what we're on about. We, we don't even get what we're on about. So, um, yeah, Wick, Wicker Man was just something that fits. It makes the best of... Um, the wood material, it makes the best of the site. We knew that we wanted to do Alton's most immersively themed roller coaster that we've ever done. So we knew it, we, we knew we wanted to focus more on telling the story to our guests than we normally would. All of our rides have a backstory, as you know. We don't always convey that very deeply to our guests, but with Wicker Man, we took a very conscious decision to tell that story and to make it clear and involve our guests and make them a character in the story. So there's all of that. Um, we can draw from the local area with the woodlands, it just felt like it fits in Alton and it fits with the brand and we built the Wicker Man which is not affiliated with any of the movies. It just draws on, um, I mean we always draw on lots of sort of culture and music and media and theatre and all sorts of influences and we just decided to build our own interpretation of Wicker Man and build the effigy that catches on fire. And key to Wicker Man of course was the combination of wood and fire and uh, I do read your forums. <laughs> <laughs> I know everything you ever say <laughs> and um, I think some of you have sort of said oh what could go wrong and not you guys as well but when Alton's social media post went out and said wood and fire people were like what could go wrong there that's the point that's why we've done it that is the exact reason we've put wood and fire together we've done it in a safe way as you know the wicker man is not made of wood it's not flammable it's not made of anything flammable the only real flame is on the shoulders of the wicker man all the rest is special effects, Hollywood effects, and as part of my California trip, I literally went to Hollywood film studio special effects specialists. Oh, well, but here, but and, <laughs> yeah. I was working here. <laughs> and <laughs> and, <laughs> and no, we talked to them about how do we create flame effects that are convincing under the strong sunlight um, and things like that, which is why we ended up with the decision of putting screens in Big Bob instead of trying to create light that competes with the sunlight and smoke effects. We, we Big do Bob. Have... I just, you don't know. <laughs> it's the pet name with which we refer to the Yeah, sorry I, sorry, I feel like you probably all do now. We've been referring to him as Big Bob. Um, <laughs> Wicker, the Wicker Man was obviously we were building the Wicker The ride's called Wicker Man, so that got confusing in our meetings. Yeah, so it started to come, come into drawings, and obviously, you know, it was still secret at the time, but then I was starting to see drawings with Wicker Man written on, and it was like, we can't put Wicker Man on any drawings in case, you know, it gets out and this, that, and the other. So we sat in the meeting, so we'll just have to call him Big Bob, and it's just stuck, and now everybody calls him Big yeah. Bob. Yeah. So uh, for me, he'll always be called Big Bob. <laughs> Well, our intent is to run up with three trains. I the think with the, uh, the amount of um, visitation that we'll get on this ride straight away, I'm sure we'll be flat out from the get-go. So the intent is to run with three trains all the time. It's not driven by any volume scaling. So the challenges will, for us will be around how we manage our daily and our weekly checks on those rides through the technical team. 
and how that will have an impact. But we've got the ride on early ride time, uh, so that gives the team, the techies, a limited window in which to do those maintenance checks. So, so but the intent is with three trains. That's good. Thank Absolutely. You. I don't think there's been any particular surprises. It, it was, you know, we started this process in, in 2014, and it was great that you said, like, you know, it's more advanced than 13 was, and it was more advanced than, than Smiler was. And I think a lot of that was that we did a lot of front end work. Um, and because, you know, we've been going down this route and looking at a Woody for so many years, that, you know, a lot of that was formulated quite early on, so that when we, could, when we actually got on the construction site, we were, we were very clear in terms of what we were doing. So in terms of surprises, no, there hasn't been many surprises that have caused us much problem. A bit of snow, really, apart from that. Um, challenges, we, we, we dug a big hole. We were in the middle of the park. We were trying to keep it hidden, even though Sean was doing his blog. I put his <laughs> we all watched that as well, Sean. So, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> big shout out to Kevin Talbot. We had all that. Yeah. So. So, so yeah, it was about you know trying to obviously keep uh, the wicker man under wraps for as much as we as, as much as we could, and making sure that the park still operated during the season while we were constructing. You know, we we dug a big hole in the and you know we took the lake bed out for the log flume. We dug a big hole there. And we had to move that out. So that was probably the biggest challenge of the of the project. It, it, it was. I mean, we, we, we worked again. Like I say, it was, it was in the planning. You know, we, within the planning stage, we really brought a team in that that I wanted to work with. So we got GCI. We knew GCI, but also you know the likes of Kettleman Talbot. That you know they're a local contractor. They've got a passion for the park as well. So it's about bringing all them guys in and then sitting down with them and formulating that sort of really you know close knit plan to make sure that we we looked at zones. And we said, right, we want to construct in this way. We want to construct in zones. Yeah. We want to for you to be completing this area so that GCI can get in. We want to make sure that we're landscaping now and we're not landscaping the day before we open. You know, we wanted to get that in because that's an important part of the theme as well. So, you know, there's there's areas that have greened up already. There's areas that are, you know, starting to and hopefully if we get springtime anytime soon, <laughs> everything will start to grow. So we made a conscious, you know, decision that when we opened it, it needed to be guest ready, mm. and you know, it's an important factor that we, we we need to do taking forward that we need to be guest ready, and the guest ready, it takes that you know that bit of time and that just bit of consideration when you when you construct it. You've seen for yourself as the train passes through the Wicker Man. I need to stop saying Big Bob. He bursts into flames. <laughs> um, there is an effect on the station platform which we haven't got working today, but the far wall actually has a faux flame effect in it with the smoke that will pour out of the wall. Um, obviously the pre-show. Um, what we've tried to do is just, as I said, we've built the story around the concept of wood and fire. The Bjornin are obsessed with fire. It's like their lifeblood, almost. So... Um, it's just a theme that flows through the whole ride and there is physically fire on the ride that we fused with wood but also the concept behind the story it, it's kind of woven through that as well so as you i'll just address the maintenance building as you rode through the maintenance building today you see it's pitch black it was always the intention for it to be pitch black in the pre, in the finale building, but with an audio kind of, we've always called it the Glenn Close moment from Fatal Attraction, where she comes back for one final scare. Um, at the moment, the trigger needs moving. It, the piece of audio is firing, but you're not hearing it because you're not in the shed yet. Um, we are looking at, between now and opening, what we can do to create a bigger effect in that room. Um, but at the moment, it's not quite confirmed, but what's in there at the moment is what we always intended to do because the wicker it, It's going a bit deep into the story, but the wicker man's been defeated and you've escaped So it's literally just him saying you will not escape sort of thing um, Of the pre-show you've seen so inside the building that was a secret I'm getting the impression that you guys liked that so I'm really pleased about that because um, We really wanted that to be great and to kind of elevate the ride above just the um, the wooden coaster element of it. 
But even the slalom underneath the pre-show, we've just pumped that room full of smoke and red light. The concept was to feel like you're slipping out of the building and slipping out of a building that's just starting to catch fire and you're just slipping out and, and making it out. So, yeah, but Hol Holovis have been a fantastic partner on the pre-show. They completely get it. Um, as you know, we've, all, we've worked with IMA Score on the Ride Audio through Holovis. Um, and just having Holovis as kind of like a show director role, just to bring together all of those elements of the theatrical, the audio, the AV, the pre-show, it's great to have someone across all of that, and I think it's proven that that creates the continuity that we want. I don't know if you guys noticed, I spoke to some of you about this, but we've also got a three-phase dynamic soundtrack. So as you go through the attraction, through the queue line, you start on the plaza and it's quite light and joyful, and then it gets darker and darker as you move to the end. So all of those elements we've worked with Hollow Beats and I may score on, uh, just to go a step further than we have before, with just a sort of looping soundtrack on the ride. Mm. We, we always approached it wanting it to be that way. Um, the brief was deliver a family thrill attraction. We know that the rides are 1.2, so we wanted to just kind of ramp up the intensity a bit with that pre-show. We've had a lot of comments, are you worried some of the younger guests who are 1.2 will be scared of that? Um, and that may well be the case, so we're saying it's down to kind of parent discretion. And same with Galactica, if you really don't want to ride with the VR, you can ride it without. If you really don't want to go in the pre-show but you want to go on the coaster, we're not going to say no to that. We'll be able to direct people the other way onto the station platform. We really want to target as wide a breadth of our guests as possible with this attraction. Yeah, I'll go back to you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> the manufacturer's um, brochure is 44, Yeah. but we think it's coming in a bit quicker, don't we? We, we, we do. We, we, we're doing them sort of final checks of it to see where we are, but we're about 45 miles an hour. Feels about that compared to other cheesy eyes. Yeah, yeah, it's in that, in that ballpark. Certainly feels it at the back of the train as well. At the back it's great of the train, the back, really intense. Yeah, 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 really good. Can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, no, 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 no. Just within our normal operational yeah. hours, and I think I mean I'm really looking forward to Scarefest. Yeah. yeah. When uh, yeah. we have it running at night time, I mean, so you know, you, you know how late yeah. the sun goes down anyway in the middle of summer. Yeah. Be a real challenge to stay yeah, right yeah. through. Yeah. I mean, the other point yeah. is that we were talking about this yesterday. We do we expect there might be some queues in opening mm -hmm. weeks, and we're still getting dark quite early. Yeah. And obviously, you know, we will close the queue line, but let everybody run through so it may well be that people in the first few weeks will have the chance to ride it as it's dropping dark um but Catch um the evening, but sorry she looks spectacular doesn't she yeah she bob she, she. Bob. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> we think the rides are she don't we and big bob's big bob <laughs> don't know how that works I mean, in designing the ride, we've had to design in a lot of um, audio tunnels and things like that. And we, it's also, we have a lot of neighbours close to this site that we have to be mindful of as a resort. And that is why, as you probably know, we can't operate in evening hours all throughout the year. Um, so we just need to be a bit careful. And it's dictated things like where we can put speakers on the lift hill and what direction they have to face and where we have to actually put, like, you notice on, just before we go through the chest pass of Big Bob, we've had to put in like timber walls along the track, that's to contain the sound and things like that. So all of this thought that isn't immediately obvious, probably externally, feeds into stuff like that. And I think, you know, if, if your question is sort of about, you know, is it, does it look better in the evening than it looks in the daytime? I mean, obviously it's sunny now, but if you guys have been here this morning, when it was really grey, when it was snowing and the full yeah. kind of flame and smoke was going, I mean, it, it's just as impressive. Um, so it's just, you know, it, I think with anything does, that's wooden does, as well, it has different character in different yeah, times of day yeah. and different nights. So it does, it does react. I mean, the atmosphere is different. You know, sort of so the special effects, the smoke will go one way or blow one way. The, the flame effects will move. So it, dep it depends not only sort of you know what hour you're on it really that you'll get a different effect. Yeah. Dusk is fantastic. Yeah. It is, uh, you know, we, we we've ridden it and we and during the night time and then dusk it is absolutely fantastic. But it's equally, you, you'll get it throughout the day. But at the end of the day, the effect we were going for is for it to look like it's on fire, not just to make it look snazzy and... <laughs> you, know, you know, so I think 
we've done it in an appropriate way to make it give that effect during the day and during the evening. Well, I mean, we've already talked about how we came to have the woody. I think that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is to kind of acknowledge that, yes, there feels like there has been a change of direction and a change of the wind in, you know, there's only so many things you can do technically. You can only go so fast, You can, particularly at Alton, you can only go so high. We've done loops, we've smiled. It feels like we've kind of ticked all the boxes. What we're focusing now is on just delivering fantastic attractions for our guests and world beating attractions that may not be world's firsts but actually in its own way it feels like it maybe is a world's first because it's the most immersive wooden roller coaster from a theming point of view with a pre-show whatever else that's not a fact that's a matter of opinion our focus was just to deliver a fantastic ride for our guests and i think that is the right thing to do moving forwards we may well deliver another world's first in the future but it will not be the thing that dictates our briefs anymore and was it not also about a kind of um, almost a stripping back, going back to that yeah. real primal essence yeah. of um, what it was about the original roller coasters that people loved. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, a deliberate, a deliberate decision to move away from those kind of technical first. Hopefully, I cannot speak for future developments at Thorpe. I am not allocated to Thorpe Park at the moment as a creative. Um, I know that they're looking at all sorts of different future planning options at Thorpe. Um, who knows? Watch this space. If this is a success, who knows? Um, it may well change the perception of Merlin and their opinion on putting Woody's in, but who knows? They, we, we did look at that in the early stage in Chef. Is there a particular reason you didn't go down that route? Uh, I can't remember now, actually, when we did the <laughs> analysis. What's that? It's not real. <laughs> not real. Well, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that was the, we, we did, we did <laughs> look at that and we did, it was that it needs to be a Woody if it's a Woody. Right. We, we did. Yeah. <laughs> was it also about GCI and their ability to, to um, because of the way they build it, their ability to, to create the twists and turns in that very tightly packed space with the topography? <laughs> 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 It, it was, yeah. I mean, we looked to GCI and GCI met our brief, uh, but there was that, you know, but our brief was that it needs to be a Woody. Yeah. You know, it can't be a hybrid. And we, we even did specific market testing research on, you know, do you even know what a Woody is? Here's a picture of a hybrid. Here's a picture of a Woody. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And we just came to the conclusion in the end that, as Neil said, if it's going to be wood, it just needs to be real wood. <laughs> well, we're always master planning, we're always reviewing the portfolio of rides. Um, at the moment we're starting, well, we're quite a way in obviously to 2019 developments. Um, when it comes to the next secret weapon, we just need to keep our eye on the master plan and work future plans out. But at the moment there is certainly nothing in the design yeah. stage for SW9 in active design. Watch this space. Watch this space. <laughs> As you know, we've got a capex cycle, so at the moment, it's not oh, time yeah, to work on that. For the next few years, yet. well, there's sort of the smaller capex cycle. But as we said right at the start, you know, we started this in 2014, so you know. Yeah, he's experienced it and given it a very firm seal of approval. Mm -hmm. Uh, John has consulted on this project um, in a kind of more removed position. Um, he, he's very pleased with the result and he's given us a, a, a seal of approval. As you know, he did have some input into the layout of the ride in the first drop. Um, he made a recommendation that we did so move we did forwards on. Upon. So yeah, we did, we, you know, John was involved in the design team meetings, he, he sort of advised, consulted and we did pick up on you know, some of the advice that he gave us, and that's kind of particularly around the first drop. Yeah. It, was, it was a couple of weeks ago that he was here. Yeah, yeah, we came so a couple of weeks ago and we, we, we rode it with John, which was good. And um, it was a huge um, compliment to me how amazed he was actually by the preach, and he said, that's really going to surprise people. Mm. Um, so he's a legend, as you all know, so that was a huge compliment for me yeah. to get his seal of approval on not just the ride, but the, the more theatrical kind of theming elements of it as well.